Dungeons and Daddies is a rowdy, horny, violent podcast for grown-ups. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. The dungeon roommates are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Jenny insists she's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on her wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for those with infernal heritages, which I mention only so the tieflings out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool tiefling? Hello everybody and welcome to My Goblin, My Goblin and Me, an advice show for the present age. I'm your vampire roommate, Vlad. I'm your first goblin, Jenny Ka. I'm your 30 under 30 treasure hunting luminary goblin, Damwook Uskra. Oh no. I want to suck! You're blind. I want to suck! You're blind. Welcome to I Want to Suck Your Blood. This is a podcast within a podcast where I talk about delicious meals and I am so excited this week. I almost sucked the blood of an elf named Henry Oak, who was in our dungeon, solving our puzzles with his two kids. Yeah, that was really weird. We've never seen kids in here before. At least something's up with that. He was so nice. He didn't even want any treasure. He just wanted to find out more about his own history. He was nice to us. You didn't suck his blood, did you? Believe me, I wanted to, but he had the cross and everything, and he had a problem with my whole vampire way of life. I mean, seriously, he was such a puss. No, stop it. But it's short for pusillanimous. You only looked that up after we told you it was problematic. Oh, you're the worst. That's it. I quit. I'm done. Yeah, we're out of here. But no, Get back here, please! It's not too late to make a Three Creatures Just Chatting comedy podcast! Come on, please! Welcome to Dungeons and Daddies, not a BDSM podcast, sort of sometimes a tabletop role-playing game podcast about four dads from our world flung into the Forgotten Realms in the quest to rescue their lost sons. My name is Freddie Wong. I am Glenn Close in this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> and Glenn Close has a cover band. He plays Christmas music. This week's dad fact about Glenn. I was thinking about this because Glenn's about to take the stage here in mm-hmm. the Oak Vale. And I was just thinking about good concert stories, you know, good gig stories from Glenn. So one time they were playing like a Northern California outdoor mall. Do they have outdoor malls? They don't have outdoor malls in Northern California. Yeah, they do. do they? Did yeah. They? Maybe Central California, maybe Modesto or Fresno or something. Yeah, I used to live in Hanford near Fresno, and there was tons of, yeah, there okay. was all kinds so of So he was playing it, and, and as is Glenn's kind of habit, before every concert, he avails himself of what the best the food court has to offer. So he was at the hot dog on a stick, but something about either the hot dog, the stick, or the lemonade that he got didn't quite sit right with him, but they were about to go on. So they're like, Glenn, we got to go on. And he's like, I can't. Oh man, I got to I got, ooh, my tummy hurts. Mm. I, I well, need a second. You're not supposed to eat the stick. You're not well, supposed to eat hot dogs. Someone left a fire in Santa's chimney. <laughs> <laughs> God. But luckily for Glenn. He shit his pants. Luck- <laughs> <laughs> no, no, luckily for Glenn, he has, um, I, I'm, Freddy I'm not started sure to guys... my grandpa just kind of telling a story that I'm not sure where it's going. Okay, Freddy, where, where is this going? I'm not sure you guys know this, but like you can have as a guitar player, you can have a wireless system. You can play the guitar that wirelessly transmits to your board. So mm-hmm. it allows you to not be tied down by a cord. So he was like, just start the intro to Jingle Bells and I'll be playing from the toilet. <laughs> That's so pretty dope. I refuse played. to believe this happened. <laughs> I know this is a fictional podcast where you get to say whatever happened, but he played guitar from the toilet during the gig? Yeah. How far was the toilet? What is the range? It's an outdoor electric mall. Guitar? It's not that far. It's just around the view. Well, you're the ultimate cinema sins of people's dad oh facts. Oh, my God. You're yeah, what the hell, does it you're like, excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> That's what happened, Will. I don't care if you believe it. That's what happened. <laughs> Hello. My name is Matthew Arnold. I play Daryl Wilson, a stay-at-home coach dad who becomes a barbarian upon entering entering the Forgotten Realms. A dad fact, I guess. I just thought this right now. I was just thinking about what Daryl's allergies were. Daryl doesn't know. Every time he goes to the doctor's office, he just puts penicillin because he like thinks, but he doesn't know. Nobody's ever given him penicillin. What? He's never checked. And they say, what are your allergies? And he just puts penicillin because he's always put it, but he has no idea if he's actually allergic to penicillin. What? Like you could be like, <laughs> yeah, just don't give me it. antibiotics. Like. <laughs> But he does have one real allergy. The mm-hmm. one allergy he does know he has, because uh, he refuses to get the allergy test because he doesn't like needles, is he has a latex allergy. <laughs> and he discovered that. Oh. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. For about no, no, two no, no, years, no, no, no. he no, no, thought no, no, he was no. doing sex wrong. No, no, no. No, no, no. Time out, time out, time uh, out. Here comes time the out, out, fucking cinema sins. Here we go. Here we go, Freddy with a fucking pedantic yeah. ass fact. Uh, I researched this shit, so there's no way Freddy's knowing it. 
In episode one, oh, yeah. shit. Henry talks about how he has condoms on his fingers, which are like uh-huh. latex condoms. So do I suck his fingers? What are you talking yeah. about? I told <laughs> that it has nothing to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> I knew someone who had a latex allergy. Yeah, it burns your ding dong. It's not nice. No, 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 no. You couldn't bring balloons to school when I was going to high school. Oh, because wow. I mean, there's various levels. I was just looking this up. And sometimes people who have the allergy to condoms, it takes a long time to like get to a point where it's really bad. It's like subtle burning. And then he gets, that's like Daryl. <laughs> Daryl didn't die. Daryl didn't lose his dong. He just thought God was punishing him. Yeah. He was like, why does it hurt all the time? I'm going too fast, maybe. Maybe this is the problem. I have been on about four Tinder dates with guys who spontaneously <laughs> had latex allergies. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Daryl's I didn't wink, mention wink. I have a late. Oh, well, I guess. My name is Will Campos. I play the fictional character Henry Oak on the podcast Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, really? That's the name of the podcast, Will? Did I say Dungeons and Damn it! Ding! One wrong podcast. Ding! Wrong <laughs> podcast. This isn't going well. Oh, no. Oh, Fuck. no. R.I.P. me. This is like honestly one of those podcasts that I like, oh, this is a good podcast. So I turn on this episode and then they're like fucking jerking each other off for 25 minutes in the intro. Like I'm a friend of theirs and I'm like, shut the fuck up and talk about true crime. <laughs> Beth, you're the one doing the jerking. You I, can't complain. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I've been jerking the whole thing. I am Will Campos, and I play the fictional character Henry Oak on the podcast Dungeons & Dragons. God you said it again! <laughs> Ding, too! God, oh, I can't remember. Oh, no way! No way! Henry's allergy no. is that he's allergic to bad vibes. Moving on. <laughs> let's go, let's go, Beth, let's go. Bring us, bring us, bring yo, us back. Yo, yo, oh, yo, on, yo, yo, my name is Beth May, and I play Ron Stampler, emotionally stunted. <laughs> Shit. Ding. I emotionally what? detached stepfather. <laughs> emotionally detached no. stepfather on the fictional podcast uh, Dungeons no. and Daddies. <laughs> Fun fact about Ron. Um, so, <laughs> so okay, so I was going to try to make fun of like a Henry dad fact, but then that's just not as funny as like living apparently right now. <laughs> Fun fact about Ron is that his favorite dad fact is that um, the word dad is from the mid 16th century, perhaps imitative of a young child's first syllables. Da, da, oh, da. Wait, comes so da came first? Da no. came first? No, ma comes first in Dang. almost every language. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, 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 but I want to understand. You're saying that, is this true that like we basically just like, yeah. A baby said da, and then they were like, yeah, that yeah. means dad now? Because yeah. the man was like, that was for me. That noise was mine. I'm just on Google, Will. I don't know. Generally, the first word that any infant will say is ma, because if you think about the pronunciation and formation of it, it's an utterance from the- it's his mom. Well, no, because it's a basic vocal utterance, and then the movement is almost just mouth movement. You can make that sound without any articulation of the lips. And so Being the hard- She didn't say that it was literally the first thing they said. She just said that they do say da. That's what she said. <laughs> So I'm dinging your ding. <laughs> There's some fascinating stuff about this because certain words like older brother and younger Anthony, brother in different go. languages. Anthony, okay. <laughs> Anthony okay. please. Most, it's most me. infants' first word is just Jim Carrey <laughs> saying smoking from the <laughs> 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 Somebody stop me. (laughs) (laughs) No, the first word is an Ace Ventura. They point at the vagina and they go, do not go in there. (laughs) Nice. I'm Anthony Birch. I'm your daddy master. uh, And uh, I'm allergic to bubble bath liquid. Really? Yeah. Wait, what's different in bubble bath liquid than the normal soap? I think it was just one particular kind of bubble bath liquid I used when I was a kid. (laughs) And I've just like, I never really enjoyed bubble baths that much. So you've deprived yourself of bubble baths ever since just because of one... Bad. Once bitten, twice shy, bath, baby. Instant. And then we're gonna go over there and make you a bubble bath. That's Aww. assault. That would be a form of assault. <laughs> <laughs> well, we last left the group. Henry and Ron and Larkin Sparrow and two goblins had gone to the topmost level of the dungeon and found uh, a big real to real film projector and a woman who seemed to be from the 1920s who turned out to actually be Horsey Oak, his bully from childhood and the visage of his grandmother. I love it. Meanwhile, outside the dungeon, Glenn and Daryl and Ron's animated body, who doesn't sound like Ron. Ron in hand quotes. Are basically (laughs) preparing for some plan to potentially burn the forest down if they need to using a grease fire and Aaron O'Neill's 
bird familiars. Why don't we jump back into the dungeon? Horsey Oak goes meow, 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 with his mouth. He doesn't have a phone or anything. He's just going meow, 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 farted in your face. Another Horsey Oak classic. Meow, meow, meow. Who are these two ugly things? <laughs> Please. Oh, what the freaking jeez. Gosh darn it. Horsey Oak. Horsey? Horse, why? Why do I know who you are? Oh, yeah, you're that jerk from, oh, jeez, ow, my head hurts. He's throwing gang signs and he's going like, that's right, that's right. I was better than you before. I'm even better than you now. Will someone stop messing with me? No one tells me what's going on anymore. My dad's like, oh, go into this mystery dungeon. Then I go through six layers of freaking traps and nonsense. My sons show up. They're immortal or something. I don't know what the heck's going on here. Then I see, I guess, a lady in a movie theater that's a telescope. And then you fart in my face. Just will someone tell me who I am and where I come from? I want to watch the movie. Ron wants to watch the movie. Is there a movie or is this just all a big goof? What's going on? Lark and Sparrow raise their hands and go, mm, we would like to watch the film. And Horsey raises his hand and goes, yeah, ding dong, dingus. Uh, your dad basically- hey, don't you talk to my boys like that, whoever you are, sir. The ding dong dingus was for you. Well, don't, I don't appreciate that. <laughs> good one, good one. Really nailed that one. And they're like, father, you know, I'm just, father, you're getting owned. I'm not getting <laughs> owned, boys. This is actually a teachable moment because I, the only way I get owned is if I stoop to his level of being toxic and mean. You know, you, you gotta be positive. That's very immature, horsey. And that mm -hmm. doesn't surprise me um, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. based on your pattern of behavior. But I, I hope that you can grow someday. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Hey, how does it look to look at your own weird, ugly grandmother and know that I can do this to her? And he just starts punching himself in the face over and over. He goes like, who's winning now, huh? Who's winning now? I mean, that doesn't, uh, you're hurting yourself. So, you know. No, I don't feel nothing. I feel great. Do you want to watch this stupid movie or not? Horsey, hey, you know, it's been a while. And, you know, maybe it's just because I'm coming back to this as an adult now. But are you all right, man? <laughs> You okay? <laughs> I'm doing fine. Every day I wake up and I'm not Henry Oak, so I'm feeling pretty good, baby. <laughs> I, mm, well, you know, gee whiz. That, you know, I hope you know that it hurts when you say stuff like that. And I'm I'm a human being just uh, like you are. Uh, that's why I say it. That's the point of it. Mm, you know, maybe there's some hurt inside that you're not addressing. We'll talk about that later. I am pretty anxious to see. I got some hurt right here, he says, as he farts again. <laughs> as Horsey is saying this to you, you see Lark reach into his back pocket and he takes out a sock with something heavy at the end of it. It's not red, but you get the sense just from the metallic smell that it is blood. It is like a weird phosphorescent sort of multicolored rainbow stain on the end of this sock. And he goes, stop being mean to my father or you're gonna get a little hit from Socrates. Uh, uh, Horsey, can we put pause on this just for a second? Yeah, handle your ugly, dumb kids. Uh, sir, excuse me. That's rude. Lark, what is that? What's What do you got in the sock there? That doesn't look safe. He goes, oh, this? Can I see that? And I, I try to take it from him. Uh, so I shouldn't he, have said try. I should have said take it from him, but <laughs> I said try. So that's what we're going with. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> he basically hands it to you like a samurai handing their sword over. Like it's a great, it's an object of great honor. <laughs> I receive it in kind. Oh, thank you. And thank I, you. And I do a little bow. This isn't appropriate of what we're doing. This is just, we, we, we like samurai movies. This is fine, right? <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to get back to you on that one. <laughs> Henry Oak's going to be thinking about that all day. Yeah, Henry's like, <laughs> is that I, correct? <laughs> Henry's thinking back to like, he's like, you know, I remember reading the Criterion collection cover for Yojimbo and there was an essay, but I don't know. This seems maybe weird. <laughs> Look at the kids go to karate and in karate, they're your sensei. I think maybe it's just because Henry isn't really like their martial arts <laughs> master in any way, shape or form. But you know, it's just complicated. Henry doesn't know how he feels about it yet. I think we all need to saddle down. <laughs> uh, so, so he says. Maybe we got off on the wrong hoof. <laughs> that's very funny, Ron. You're doing a good job. Hey, I appreciate it. I don't get you. it. I don't get it. What's the dog laughing for? Oh, we're just doing some <laughs> witty canter. Mm, hey, 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 that that's was really, really good, good, actually. That's that really that good. inspiration. Yeah, okay, cool. There's no inspiration in D&D 1.0. Fuck. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Lark and Sparrow say like, oh, that was a weapon we found on one of our off-screen adventures with a group of mercenaries while mm. you were away. Inside, you will note, is the uh, a head of a decapitated god. Excuse what? me? <laughs> if Socrates hits somebody, then they will take wisdom damage because the memories of the god will go into their brain and cause them a great deal of stress. Oh my god, who gave this to you? Who are these bad <laughs> mercenaries that let you have this? This is I'm keeping this with the gauntlets and I put it in my no, bag. No, why did I give it to you? Oh, uh, Sparrow never make that mistake again. Mm, well, I sort of <laughs> won the battle but lost the war there, but boys, daddy can fight his own battles. Daddy and Horsey 
your old friends, and they're just catching up with each other, and uh, I can take care of myself, but I appreciate you. Give me a deck save. <laughs> I got a 15. You barely dodge out of the way as Horsey Yoke comes in for a noogie. He's got his arm out ready to get your head in the crook of his elbow, <laughs> and he goes, oh, he's getting a little bit quick. He's getting a bit quick. Oh, I, like, I like the chase, baby. Does he still look like my grandma? Yes. <laughs> hey, 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 no, no noogies. Okay, look, what are we, is this all like a big bully Henry prank or is there something for me to learn up here? Oh no, this is real, this is real. Uh, Barry said somebody's gotta stay here and encourage you to watch the thingy and then I volunteered, so you should watch the thingy. All right, I am gonna watch this thing. Okay. But, ah, uh, cheapers, I don't know about the, the B-O-Y-S. Father, father, this. father, 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 father. Mm-hmm. As you know, Lark and I have been reading the Wikipedia entries for the films that you and Mother will not let us watch. <laughs> that was the compromise so that you would start reading. You're right. Yes. That was the trade-off. <laughs> I have read about every Saw film, one through seven. You read the Holy Saw shit. movies? Oh my Frankly, God. I don't see the shit. appeal. That's not Frankly, the, I don't oh, understand. Oh, jeez, this is explaining a lot about the last couple of Halloween we've had in the house yes <laughs> okay boys this is a big boy grown-up moment but this has to do with our family we're going to experience it together because you know i'm an open book if anything if i okay here's what we're going to do if i say earmuffs you have to put your hands over your ears mm -hmm. and if i say eye muffs you have to turn around so if i say ear and eye muffs you got to close your ears and eyes and turn the other way so okay of course and these morality points are being tracked that we may later get the gauntlets correct that's true this is all going towards the gauntlet fantastic point. fantastic but boys it's okay because if you have to cover your ears or your eyes i will read you a wikipedia passage from a movie that you would not be allowed to see Oh. Now, I will let Ron do that as long as I can approve the movie. I'm delighted at this potential. <laughs> this is what we in the biz call a win-win. You're right. Let's watch the film. Horsey goes, all right, everybody take your seats, ding-dongs. This is going to be kind of a long monologue type of thing, and you're just going to sort of have to get details <laughs> from it. Uh, okay, thanks, Horsey. But also, if you want to interrupt it, I can pause the movie just whenever. <laughs> For, like, goofs and riffs. You just don't feel like you're just sitting listening to me. Okay, Horsey jams his face into the side of the reel-to-reel -reel projector, and it begins to grind away the mud on his homunculus face as it starts to turn. And he goes, this is fine. This doesn't hurt. This is normal. I love this. And a light shoots out of the front of the projector and illuminates the back wall of this room. Why did he jam his face into it? I don't understand. He's, this is how I turn it on. Needs a little juice. Oh, uh, okay. Horsey is the best character, Needs a face way. juice, nerd. If you were cool, you would know how to do this. AV Club Forever, nerds. <laughs> <laughs> yes. no. An image flashes onto the back wall and you see the same woman who you just saw shove her face into the reel to reel. Uh, what? No previews? Am I right? God. We don't fly along on like and there's a big, you know, popcorn floating in space and then it pops. Yeah, it's a big old roller coaster with horrible like the fantasy equivalent of 3D imagery and like people going, wow, <laughs> a big horrible 3D soda with really bad like fluid dynamics, like but it doesn't have a brand on it because it's like they don't want to like offend any of their non-sponsors. Are the goblins like going bonkers yeah, right they're now? Yeah, they are so, they're so psyched. <laughs> like, what is this? Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so once the coming attractions are done. You know, a tenant still hasn't come out. So, you know, <laughs> probably a tenant trailer. You see what you now know as presumably the image of your grandmother who is investigating a science facility, which you now realize is the room that you're in, albeit one that's more new and clean and also filled with insane cultist people. Anthony, would you say that this something happened in this room and she is in the room where it happened? <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> Correct. Her and her friends, Eliza and Peggy. So she, she, you, see, you see her with some friends. You see the friends. Immediately, the very first thing you see is that one of her friends, who is a very handsome Chinese man who you immediately have some untoward feelings toward, oh. his face gets smashed in by some sort of horrible monster that you can't quite tell because it's in the distance. It's kind of out of focus. Oh, and soon you see... No earmuffs or eye muffs there? Oh, uh, uh, eye muffs, eye muffs. <laughs> like, Father, it's over. It's, I, I think it's too late for that. Oh, man, I'll get the next one. Uh, this is a fictional movie, okay. guys. This is Lark a fictional and Sparrow. movie. Body of Evidence is a 1993 American erotic thriller film. <laughs> Go on. 
<laughs> it originally nice. received the rare NC-17 rating. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, I'm done. So you see your grandmother scream in terror as something engulfs her. It's something the camera can't seem to pick up. It's like an undulating, cloudy mass of film grain and hair and static and imperfections in the film itself, like entropy made manifest. She screams and it engulfs her and everything goes black. And when she opens her eyes again, she's somewhere new. She and the building that she was inside, this building, are in a new world. And the static, the grain, it's seemingly gone, except you can see that there's a little of it in one of her wrists, in the veins, traveling under the skin, a thin thread of static and decay coursing through her veins like blood. Can you tell I wrote this down beforehand? Yes. <laughs> and she stumbles into a bright forest, and she meets a tall, young-looking immortal, an elf with elven ears. He's handsome as anything. And we see... Wait, so the camera is like, wait, are we like, what? Do, how is this being filmed? And the sound of Horsey's face grinding against the reels. You can hear him go, it's called a memory camera nerd. Look it up sometime. Read a book. Oh, my God. <laughs> Stupid sports ass loving nerd. Jeez. <laughs> Why don't you go hike, nerd? Why don't you go post about it on your day? The security camera wouldn't be at that angle. (laughs) I went to Chapman for this. (laughs) We see her meet this super handsome elf, and we see the two of them slowly fall in love as she's taking pictures and he's explaining the world to her, and they marry, and they have a son, and that son is Barry. You can just sense it by looking at him, even though he's just a little baby. And we see the static, that grain, that pinprick of chaos in your grandmother, that transfers into Barry and it grows stronger and bigger and more opaque. And the child Barry grows up and you see him studying magic and bringing the creatures of the forest to heal and teaching them to respect him and follow his instructions. And travelers through the forest come to listen to his tales and his wisdom. And slowly he amasses a little community of people eager to hear the tales of dimensions beyond this one that his mother came from. One day, he meets a human woman, a cleric, an adventurer named Autumn. And they fall in love and they marry and they have a son. And that son is named Henry. And you see now that you are looking into the face of your young self. And it looks a lot like Larkin Sparrow in, in a sense. Uh, you, you have a very strong family resemblance. <laughs> and the static, that film grain that was in your grandmother and then down to your father, you see it pass from your father into you. And again, it grows stronger and it grows a little bit more chaotic. As Henry grows up, he constantly seeks the approval of his father, this larger-than-life figure who can command crowds of people with just his voice. But try as he might, Henry can't seem to live up to Barry's standards. He makes art, but Barry finds it derivative. He casts spells, but Barry finds them weak. Barry seems to be more interested in the sound of his own voice booming out over crowds than of speaking to his own son, who seems to be a constant disappointment to him. One day, Henry gets really angry when Horsey Oak pushes him into some mud, and Henry comes back to his father red hot with rage and shaking, and rather than comforting his child, Barry gets angry at his own son for showing anger and showing negativity, and he chastises him for not being good enough to move past it. Barry believes, and he tells all of his followers this, that perfection can be achieved, but that Henry is, as of yet, incapable of doing so. Unlike himself, anyway. Barry learns how to shape the world. He finds a tree he considers to be perfect, and he replicates it over and over, and he makes a forest out of this one perfect tree. And he attracts people to this forest who are just as interested in finding the perfection within themselves as he is. And as Barry's commune grows in size, Henry's mother, Autumn, begins to grow cold and distant even to Henry. In fact, we see her growing more and more fearful of Barry to the point where... After a big speech of his, she gets so sick of his holier than thouness and his grandiosity that she tries to stab him in the back, literally. He survives the attempt, but it's this incident that inspires him to create an anti-violence field around Oakvale. You see that he focuses all of his harmonic energies while doing the most audaciously like flexible yoga into a crystal. Once the crystal is made, you see people trying to slap each other and it doesn't work, and and now the anti-violence field has surrounded Oakvale. We see... Barry, alone in his office, trying to create a sort of looking glass with which he can try to spy on other dimensions and maybe spy the dimension that his own mother came from. And we get very brief glimpses of worlds beyond this one as he tries to attune this looking glass. We see radiation-scorched wastelands. We see neon megacities. We see vessels flying through the stars. But always, his attempts seem to end in failure before they really begin. Barry is furious, and thinking that he's alone, he punches the looking glass as hard as he can, and he shatters it. But he's not alone. A young Henry is watching him from the shadows. Later, we see Henry in his private study, mixing magical concoctions, casting spells, trying to repair his father's mirror. He's absconded with it from his father's office, and he's got it in his own room. And after many, many years of experimentation, of secret study, of hiding away from his father, of sleepless nights spent by candlelight as the static, the noise, the grainy anomaly inside of him grows larger and more erratic, after many, many years of that, success. 
the looking glass switches on and it stays on. He can see another world, another forest in another dimension unlike his own. But he can't just see it, he's drawn into it, pulled into it. Henry's body crashes into the mirror, shattering it, sending shards of magic and glass everywhere as he's pulled through the dimension. His very mind is being torn out by the process of interdimensional travel. He screams, and his screams summon his father. But when Barry shows up, he only shows up a little bit too late as he watches his son pull through a now broken mirror. And he knows that Henry is gone, but more than that, he knows that Henry has done it, that Henry has figured out what Barry could not. He takes a deep, calming breath. The look that comes over Barry is not one of anger or frustration or even of concern for where his son has gone. It's a faint smile. Maybe the thing that made Henry special, maybe that came from Barry. Maybe it took so long for that specialness to show itself because Autumn's humanity and her imperfections polluted Barry's inherent wisdom. So Barry thinks, what I need to do is make another child who has more of my attributes and less of Autumn's, less of my wife's. So he makes another child out of the mud of the earth. And though he isn't a talented enough warlock to create a soul out of whole cloth, he can animate these homunculi with memories, the memories that he has of his son, of Henry. And so into each new oak child, into each new homunculus, he puts a different memory of his time with Henry. And for the souls, he gains the help of a talented warlock, one from another dimension, who siphons the souls out of woodland creatures and puts them into these homunculi. But none of these souls are good enough because none of them are truly Henry. As Barry goes to gather more clay for the homunculi, the interdimensional warlock turns and we see his face. It's Willie Stampler. Meanwhile, on the other side of the mirror, Henry's screams finally stop as he falls unconscious. And then he comes to in a forest, a forest unlike the one of his homeland. And he meets a beautiful hiker named Mercedes Garcia. And they fall in love and they get married and they have two beautiful boys. That noise, that grainy chaos passes into them, but not all of it. A third stays with Henry inside of him, undulating and growing and maturing. And a third of it goes into Sparrow and a third of it goes into Lark. And you get the sense that this creation, this unknowable chaos is to some extent the same thing that both of you saw when you looked at the horrible dookie in the, the bathroom <laughs> back at Ballsty. And so you now have lost your disadvantage. Uh, for a second, I thought we were turning into a real lore podcast. Then you referenced the one part where one of us looked at poop really bad. Yeah. I'm like, oh, thank God, we're still Dungeons and Daddies. <laughs> yeah. So you lose your disadvantage on all that stuff because now you understand to some extent where it comes from. And then the film goes white as the film reel runs out and you just hear the slapping of the uh, loose film as it hits the other reel. And then Horsey removes his now mangled mud face away from the uh, the projector and he goes, so that's it. So that's you. I don't get it. <laughs> I mean, it was it was kind of entertaining, but then it was, uh, I don't know, the last part, it just kind of lost me. So Lark and Sparrow go, Father, I do not understand. There was some sort of there was some sort of creature and we have we have some of the creature in us and you have some of the creature in you. I don't know, boys. Um, I, I I don't know. Uh, and Henry is overwhelmed and uh, he's just staring at the flickering. So it's just like that kind of white flickering light, you know, and it's you know, it's like all of his questions have been answered, but none of them have. Mm. And uh he looks down at his two boys and he says, well, I, I guess we better get out of here. He gets up and uh, he says, uh, th- uh, thanks. Thank you for showing that to me. Uh, boys, boys, let's go. Your children, having not seen this side of you before, go, like, of, of, of course, father. Yes, yes, of course. And as you go, the goblins are like, bye, it was nice to meet you. Horsey goes like, hey, uh, you, you should go talk to Barry. Barry said he wanted to talk to you after you watched the movie. Thanks, Horsey. Uh, that's what I was going to do. Uh, but thank you. Um, and, and so I, I just kind of, Henry just kind of, wordlessly walks towards the door. Okay. And so... Uh, Are you going to roll on the encounter table? <laughs> <laughs> There's That's a bu- true. You do need to roll on the encounter table. Yeah, yeah, roll We're on the still table, in Dungeons & Dragons 1.0. It's time to roll. Do it. Okay. So here's the thing about the third floor of a dungeon. Once you hit the third floor, dragons get added to the encounter table. So if I roll poorly... Wait, really? Yeah, really, genuinely. Let's see it. Okay, so when you open the door to leave the room... <laughs> There's a dragon <laughs> by the door <laughs> with its ear up next to the door. Mm-hmm. No way. And it's like, no. Hey, man, that was a lot. Uh, Henry <laughs> hugs the dragon and starts crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa. And he's just sobbing, bawling his eyes out, gripping the scales of this dragon and just holding on to it for dear life. There's a morale roll, please. 
So he rolled really bad. And he's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't really come for this is my scene. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> and the massive dragons tries to sort of slink away from you and just like gently removes your hands. Henry from just his... kind of lets it go and then um, wipes <laughs> oh, no. his eyes and wipes some snot from his mouth and his nose and goes, I'm fine. I, I'm fine. I'm, let's go, boys. Let's go. Let's get. Let's get out of here. Dog Ron uh, saddles up to Henry and uh, his ears kind of flop down. He's like. And then, you know, Henry like when breaks down sobbing again and hugs Ron <laughs> for your life. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> 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 it's, it's okay. It's, I'm okay. And then Ron puts his head back and he's like, <laughs> Lark and Sparrow begin to climb up your legs, like in Shadow of the Colossus, and they just like manage to make their way to your shoulders and they both hug you around the neck and they go, Father, no, it's, it's okay, going boys. To be okay. It's okay. It's okay. We're going to be okay. Just We're very It's all okay. right. I'm okay. I'm okay. Let's just, let's fine. Let's get out of here. Although, okay, let's just go. Okay. We love you, father. <laughs> Don't say that right now. Okay, boys. Just let me get out of here. Just let me get out of this. Okay, let's go. It's all right. It's all right. Let's go. And Henry's holding their hands really tight more for his security than theirs. And uh, he walks out of the dungeon. Outside the dungeon, Glenn and Daryl, you see Henry leave the dungeon with a uh, lark and sparrow on his shoulder like pauldrons as he holds their hands. And then behind him, Ron the dog. Dog Ron <laughs> runs up to Ron and is so happy to see him. Mustache Ron kneels over and goes, hey, hey there, good boy. And then he, and he hugs you really hey. close. And he puts his, I missed you so much. I missed you too. And he, and he hugs you really close and he puts his nose right next to your ear. And then you hear the familiar voice of Mr. Mustache going, Hey man, what's up? I was trying to wingman you, like friendship wingman you. I just, I just, I just thought, I thought I could do some, some, some good. How are you doing? How are you doing? You feeling all right? Oh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing pretty good actually. I, uh, I got some good tummy rubs down there, and it, I mean, Mr. Mustache, I mean Ron. <laughs> nice, nice save, good save. <laughs> it, it, thanks. Uh, it means we, a lot I, that you've I, been I, sort I of. Daryl's like, excuse me, what's Mr. Mustache? Is Ron? Is your mustache <laughs> talk? Ron, dog Ron now. turns over. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, we know you're still the dog. And then standing around goes, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling, fa- uh, oh, my soul's going back into the into the dog now. I, everything's confusing. <laughs> Bye. And he falls over. <laughs> that makes total sense. Wow. Dog Ron curls up next to body Ron. Henry just wants to get out of this elf body. So, so Canary's here. So she goes, oh, are you done? I can put you back into your original bodies. I, I'm, I'm done. Okay. And I set my boys down. No problem at all. A do, 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 boop. And she boops you on the nose. And then with a bright light on her finger, she goes, oh, cr- I probably should have gotten your body first. Oh, no. She runs over back to where she let your body sit down. And she goes, boop, into your body. And then she does the same thing with Ron Dog and Mustache Ron. And now you are back in your original bodies. And your homunculi forms just sort of fall over and they look like they're sleeping. Hey, Mr. Mustache. Yeah, what's up? I was wondering, I mean, I've got that dog right there. You know, that dog body's ready oh to go god. if you want oh you could have your own body you could be a, a dog uh, ron uh, but you could be your own person you know really because you've helped me out so much and i feel like you know oh the best god. thing that i could do for you maybe is to, to let you go you know but i, I still want to hang out with you i like you oh i would love you to hang out with me all the time you know you're 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 so close to me and everything but i thought you know if you want to sort of explore on your own or just sort of you know not have to let this old guy bring you down or whatever you could just be a dog mustache oh i i I like this it's your choice buddy my choice is definitely yes 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 yes. well that's great canary overhears this and she's like did you need somebody to go back into the dog homunculus yes a friend of mine (laughs) a very good friend of mine Okay. It's the mustache. It's, 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 oh, yeah. oh, I knew it. I knew you were talking to this mustache, Ron. Well, now it's a, he's a very good boy mustache. Yeah, the mustache, immediately now that the jig is up, it starts to move its tendrils, its little the, the wisp at the end. It goes, yes, I am a good boy. Now I'll be the best boy, the best boy. Yes, yes, yes. And it's like punching the air with its little mustache arms. And Canary goes, boop, <laughs> and takes the soul out of the mustache and immediately droops. So you look like Sam Elliott. And then she uh, puts the <laughs> puts the soul of the mustache into the, the dog and the dog immediately grows a new mustache at the front of its snout and the dog is like this is this is correct this feels right this is fine wait wait i'm confused henry did you guys just find the mustache down there what, no, what happened we, down no there? i know <laughs> oh, what happened i don't know look man it's really it's really fucked up it's really frenched up excuse me it's really bad and 
I need to speak with my father, like, right now. Daryl, who's never heard Henry say the F word like that, I've leans over to- I've called Daryl the F word several times. <laughs> but guessing. the way you're talking, the way you're talking, mm-hmm. Daryl leans over to Glenn and is like, we might begin that grease fire ready. <laughs> she <laughs> looks like it went serious. Looks like it went pretty hardcore down there. It's okay. We got similar hardcore actions to be able to respond with. So let's just ride it out and see how this goes. Whatever you need to, should we, like- What's the angle? What's yeah? Do you need us we to come in with like, you? Are we coming in? Like, what's the plan here? We man? got weapons. Is this like a talk? Like, what's the game plan? Is this a talk or like a talk? <laughs> this is a talk. This is a normal, boring talk. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. You know, it's gonna be boring for you guys, but it's. He, I need to. I need to to, to talk to him. Um, do you want some fries? <laughs> yeah, man, I'd love some fries. Sure. Hey, I hand him a bunch of my fries that I've been. Henry chewing just on. shovels them into his mouth. And just eats them all in like one gigantic go. He's like, these are delicious. Uh, Daryl, do you have any more of those beers, man? Father? Oh, no. It was all in the car. It's all in the, the beast. Mm, all right. I, hey, you go talk to your dad. I will find you beer. It'll be good beer. I'll make sure it's good beer with I style. I thought you were going to go like? get the Honda Odyssey somehow. <laughs> I'm going to go get the Honda Odyssey. I'm going to go get my beer and then I'll bring Six it. years <laughs> later, Daryl comes back with a beer. It's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Guys, I found out some pretty jacked up stuff about where I come from. TLDR, that's the thing that kids say, right? Correct. Doesn't it mean yeah. like trippy, long, dumb read or something like that? It's some, it's, <laughs> I saw, I read an article about it. And anyway, in summation, there's some sort of eldritch interdimensional nonsense at play. And there's a sort of a family curse in the works here. And I need to just settle this dang thing once and for all. Like the F word. Huh? You said a curse. Oh, a curse. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, it's not that kind of curse, boys. It's just kind of a darker kind of father, curse. Father, father. And they're stroking your face like face off. And they're like, you can never be cursed if you're who you are. We're the Oak Boys. Everything's going to be good. Aw. Thanks, Aww. boys. I love you both so yes. much. Yes. Now can we have the gauntlets? Glenn strokes his chin and says, they said they didn't watch face off, yet they know the face off move. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn will remember that. Canary, where is my father? I heard that he wants to speak to me. Yes, absolutely. Uh, he'll just be waiting for you at the top of that temple. You shouldn't be stopped. Do you need us to come with you, Henry? Yeah, you know, I feel like we've been pretty split up from each other, and I just feel like I'm not <laughs> as close to you guys as I used to be, you know, just because it's this adventure. Like, we've been, you know, last, I guess it's only been a couple hours, but I miss you guys. <laughs> I think it's time to get the band back together, is what you're saying. I'm pretty scared right now, and I could use my fellow dads to back me up. But it feels like Payton and your kids should probably lay low. I, I, whatever, man, fuck it. Who cares? Let's just go. Let's just do it. Let's all go. Let's go. I'm sick of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm bringing the kids. I'm like pushing Peyton along. It's like, yeah, yeah, just go. Uh, go. Henry just starts walking (laughs) towards the temple. Okay. Is the walk long enough that Ron explains everything that's happened in the video? If Ron wishes to, yes. Ron, are you going to tell us what you guys saw? What I saw? Uh, Okay, so it's like, (laughs) it's like there's a flashback to like, uh, a long time ago, and then this woman, uh, she's in the wrong place, right? And then she goes to a different place, and then it's really scary, but instead of being scared, she just sees this hot guy, and she's like, yo, let's get together. And they get together, and then they have um, they have a kid, and then there's, like, this uh, creepy juice that gets into the kid. <laughs> creepy juice. And, um... The kid. So uh, Henry's at the door of the temple. He says, "You guys <laughs> come or <to> what?" <laughs> Our character. Do we know what happened? Or yes. No? Yes. Okay. We knew what happened. Yeah. We know what was yeah. said. So okay. the door to the temple is open and waiting for you. And the guards out in front of the temple usher you in, and they say, "There's an elevator in the center, Prince Oak. He awaits for you in, in the, the highest chamber of the temple." He's Great. A prince. Great. As I'm walking by the guards, I go like, "Hey, they got some French fries up in the uh, food court over there. Uh, you guys should check it out." <laughs> Ooh, French fries, and they run. Henry's pretty over this, so he steps into the middle of the <laughs> elevator, and he's just like, "All right, what do we do? I saw his spell or something. What do we do?" Once all of you are inside the elevator, it just begins to rise because it's like a flat platform that is at the top of a tree, and the tree you feel this like groaning, stretching as the tree beneath you just starts to grow and rise up with you. And as you rise up, you see that the interior of this temple, there are trees damn near everywhere. It's not made out of wood but there are just the same beautiful tree copy and pasted all over the inside of this place as well at different levels and different sizes, almost in a way that doesn't seem, it's not symmetrical. It just draws your eye in a weird way. Like, why are there so many of these damn trees in here? What for? And a lot of graven images of Barry being heroic, being handsome, doing yoga, (laughs) speaking to large crowds of people. So that's my dad, guys. That's my dad. This is what I grew up with is uh, is, is all this. He seems like he, he thinks he's cool, huh? He sure does. And eventually you reach the top floor and there is a big closed door in front of you and to the right there is an open door and through that you can see an older 
version of the woman that you saw in the film who Barry married, an older version of your mother, Autumn, sitting in her room knitting furiously. So the look of anger on Henry's face melts and he stops and he says, Mom? And he steps towards her. Your mother looks up and she sees you and for a microsecond, you see a, a joy flash over her face and then it's replaced with utter disappointment. And she just goes, oh, he found you. Mom, it's, it's me. It's, it's Hen. I'm, and I, he sort of stumbles towards her nervously. Hi, I, I know it's, it's been a bit. I've been, I got lost. Um, how are you? Are you okay? I was better before you came back, son. I missed you, Mom. I missed you so much. I missed you too for, for a little while. And then I thought, no, it's good. You got away. You got away from all, all this, but now you're back and things are going to be worse than they were. I'm going to make, I'm going to fix it, mom. I'm going to make it better. Okay. I don't, I'm going to, I don't know what's going on and I'm, but I'm here now, you know, and we're going to, I'm going to, whatever's going on, I'm going to fix it for us. Your mother takes the knitting needles into one of her hand and she comes towards you and she grabs you by the shoulders and she goes, you have to find a way to kill him. This can't keep happening. Whatever is wrong with this family, whatever horrible shit has happened, it has to end with you and, and whoever those, uh, those are your kids. You have kids. I have my grandmother. Holy These shit. These are my boys. These are, this is Larkin Sparrow. It has to end. These are your grandkids. Oh, uh, Mom, I don't want to, I don't want to meet them. I don't want to meet them. I don't want to meet them. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go now. Um, I love you. Uh, 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 don't come back. Uh, and Henry turns and walks out the door and, and closes it. Um, you hear sobbing from inside. Okay, guys. Um, this is going to be tough. Just, just follow my lead in there, okay? Yep. We're, we, we have your back, man. Yeah, you, need. you got it, buddy. I turn to Larkin Sparrow, and I get down on one knee, and I say... Boys, I love you so much. And Lord, Lord knows I have not been the, the best father to you. And I did not have the best father. And maybe I didn't, I didn't learn the stuff I should have learned to teach you how to be a man. And I'm sorry. And if we make it through this, I'm going to try to do better. And I'm going to be tougher on you guys. Cause you know, sometimes you just drive me crazy. You know, I love you so much, but sometimes you drive me crazy and it scares the shit out of me. You got to learn to control yourselves for Pete's sake. Look at all this. I, I know you don't understand any of this yet, but someday you will. And you're going to know that you got to love yourself, but you got to control yourself too. But I don't know what's going to happen in there. So and Henry reaches into the bag and he, he takes the gauntlets out and he puts one on Lark and he puts one on Sparrow. And he, he says, you two, protect each other and love each other and fight for each other no matter what. And you love everyone in this world. You care for everyone in this world. You never close your heart to anybody. And I don't know if I can ever tell you to stop being so crazy. Maybe that's just a part of who we are. You know, maybe it's just a part of who we are is we've got this thing inside of us that we don't understand. And I'm not going to tell you to be ashamed of it. I'm not going to tell you to hate it because Lord knows I hated it in me so long. And I fought it for so long and it look where it got me. But you have to love each other and you have to love everybody. And I want you to treat everybody in this world like you treat your brother. Okay? Because I know the two of you love each other and I want you to share that with the world. And if anything happens in there, you fight like hell for each other. The kids put their gauntleted fists uh, together and towards you and they go, Father, so long as we are together, it will be OAK. Let's go. And I get up and I open the door to the other room. As you open the door, you see an offensively well-furnished room. It's like a throne room out of your dreams. Every single piece of wood in here is filigreed with gold. There are infuriatingly tasteful and well-designed statues of berry oak surrounding the perimeter of the room. And in the center of the room, you see Barry himself standing with a staff. And uh, why don't you go ahead and roll perception or investigation? I got a uh, 24. 
you see that the crystal at the top of this staff, that's the crystal that you saw him making in the film mm. after Autumn tried to kill him. And also with that 24, you can tell that he's hiding something from you. There's something in this room that he does not want you to see. And you can also feel with a certainty and with a 24, you can know that this is actually separate from the hidden thing. You know that somewhere in this room is your anchor. Hi, Dad. Those tears can only mean one thing. You've seen the truth. Oh, I'm so proud of you for getting through. What do you want? I want you to stay here. Our whole lives, you and I, and I'm sure your sons, we've always felt this sense that we were just a little bit better than other people, a little bit more special, that there was something about us that was a little bit smarter and more kind and more empathetic, and we, we were always disappointed by other people. And now you know why that is. It's because there's something incredible that was inside me, and now it's inside you and your children. You have this incredible thing, this thing that, that goes beyond words, beyond names, beyond understanding, some sort of God, some power, who knows, but it's within you. And I can teach you how to control that because my poor boy, you understand. I mean, no one knows better than you. Your anger can get out of control. You can lose a handle on it. Bad things can happen when you lose control of yourself. And now you know how bad. And those, those two boys, I've been watching them from a distance. They are, they are certainly something to behold if they ever lost control. And with your parenting style, it is a little bit possible that they will some very bad things could happen and i just want you to know that i care about you i like you and while you are in oakvale we can learn this power together we can learn how to harness it and use it for good that's all i want no why yeah this place sucks yeah fuck you buddy <laughs> Okay, well, it's obviously your emotions are be deeper in through the nose. Henry sticks the his hand back to the guys like, I got this. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> I know you want to go back to your world. And hey, for you, I would love that as well. I'm sure your wife or whoever the mother of these two is, I'm sure she's great, whatever. The thing is, if this power inside you, if you can't control it properly, or you can't control your kids properly, it could mean the end of the entire reality that you're in. You could go back to your home and... Your little human wife and all your little human friends, they could be consumed in chaos and randomness if you can't control them. And frankly, my boy, my poor son, you know as well as I do, you can't control these children. You can't control yourself. There is something superior in you, but you're so afraid of it. You're so upset at yourself for that specialness within you that it just manifests all this rage. And it's so cute that you won't admit how wonderful you truly are. But the time has come to accept that part of yourself. And I can help you if you stay here. We can keep all the world safe. We can keep your children safe. We can find a way to bring your lovely wife here, perhaps. But you can't simply leave. That would be, that would be foolish. That would be a, a classic Henry Oak blunder, as I used to say when you were growing up. Dad, I... What do you want from me? What is this? Are you fucking kidding me? I can't... What... What is this bullshit all about? Yeah, there's some, does some fucked up thing happen to our family? Some bad thing happened to my grandma and it passed on to you and it passed on to me. And that's just part of who we are. And we've got to deal with that. And that doesn't make us better than anyone. It doesn't make us worse than me. It's just a thing. Who gives a shit? So reality is a little more complicated than we thought it was. And there's weird gods and demons and who the hell else knows what's going on. But that doesn't make us better. It doesn't, that doesn't work that way. So Barry begins to very calmly do yoga and he goes, oh, he's stretching. And he goes, I was I was prepared for this. Yes, yes, yes. The funny thing about anger is it comes from a place of inferiority and not quite believing in yourself sufficiently. And that's why you've never seen me to be angry, Henry. That's because I know. Oh, yeah. I had just passive angry. Yeah. no, I, I, Give me a fucking break. You've been angry the entire time I've known you. Oh, that's good. Roll, uh, roll persuasion with advantage. Okay. Ooh, cool. <laughs> Uh, I got a 19. Ooh, okay. Ooh. So for the first time, maybe in your life, as far as you can remember, you see his eye twitch. You hear his breathing, his practiced rhythmic breathing. It goes a little bit off tempo, and he flicks an eye in a direction. He goes, oh, th this, this will be delightful. I, I, in, in what way Dad, am I angry stop, exactly? Stop, Dad, stop. Dad, I love you, okay? 
despite everything, I love you. And maybe I'm just seeing things a little bit more clearly now, but I think you're angry for the same reason that I'm angry. Because the thing that's inside you, that's inside me, it scares you the way it scares me. And I'm angry because I can't control it. I don't think I'm perfect. I don't think I'm better than everyone. I think I'm fucked up. I think I'm a broken man. And I try so hard. Do you, do you think my fucking favorite TV show is The Sunrise? Man, I like tears. <laughs> I don't fucking care about The Sunrise. I'm sick of it. Dude. <laughs> oh, shit. You fight it and you fight it and you squeeze it down more and more and more. And, you know, I guess maybe your way of dealing with it is, uh, shit, I don't know what it was like for you when you were a little kid with grandma and grandpa. And you must have been so confused. It must have been so scary for you. And I don't know what you kind of received growing up, but this isn't normal. And I don't mean to say that to shame you. I just, you know, like you don't have to be this amazing, perfect guy. You can just be Barry. That was all I ever wanted from you growing up, man. I just wanted a dad. People don't love you. People don't love you because you don't like show yourself. You just show them this image of what you want to be and everyone sees through it, but they're just scared of you to say anything. Well, I'm saying something, dad. Like you're angry, you're pissed off and just maybe accept that for a second. Maybe you're not going to beat this thing. Maybe that, you know, there's not... Shit, I'm rambling, man. I'm, I, I just, can we not? Can we just put this away? I, I spent so long hating you and then I forgot about you and it was the best thing that ever happened to me, but it's, it was always in the back of my head somewhere and here I am and I got to face it now, but dad, I can't carry hate for you in my heart. I, wh what does that teach my boys? I just told them they got to love everybody, which means I have to love you and I love you and I don't, I don't want to fight. Your mom said she wants me to kill you. What does that say about you? What does that say about your relationship, man? Damn. Just dad, let's not. Let's just, just give me my anchor. And like, you know, maybe uh, who knows what's going to happen. But I know that this isn't working. What you're doing, what you've been doing isn't working. And it's not too late to change. Roll persuasion. Do I get advantage on that one? No. <laughs> it was I great, but I just can't keep giving you advantage. <laughs> Oh, I got a um, 17. Okay. Okay. It's right on the edge of what I was going to do. Okay. <laughs> we'll stop edging our DM. Yeah. <laughs> God. Barry pauses for a second, and he moves through his vinyasa, and he stands, and he says, fine, not a problem. Mm. And he moves to a chest on his desk, a little chest. He opens it up and he takes out a bottle of overnight oats. And you can sense once it's out of its chest, this is your anchor. And he holds it up in his hand and he goes, Willie gave this to me. He said not to let you have it under any circumstances. He said to keep it hidden. I am choosing to ignore that direction from him. And now I give it to you, Hen, my son. And he holds it out to you. Can I make a perception check on my daddy? It would be uh, insight, but yes. I too would like to make an insight check. Glenn knows not to accept cereal from strangers, and he narrows <laughs> his eyes. I got a uh, 10. Okay, so with a 10, you, you can't tell if he's telling the truth or not. Glenn, what about you? I got an 18. Okay, with an 18. Uh, Glenn's had a lot of bad deals. He's gotten a good <laughs> success for it. Okay? Glenn's had a lot of condescending people offering cereal. <laughs> you, you don't do a lot of mall gigs without dealing with some of the scum of the earth. You know what I'm saying? Some of these malls, man. These guys, they don't get you paid. You're halfway across state lines before you even see a check. No, nah, he knows. He's got a nose for it. So you can tell that the overnight oats that he's handing to Henry are indeed the anchor, but that there is something deeply, desperately, horribly important that he is not telling Henry. I kind of like use my foot to kind of nudge Henry in the back of the ankle a little bit. And, I, and I'm like, mm, Henry, I've been through a lot of deals. Something about this feels fishy. Oh. Don't like it one bit. Can I roll like Arcana? I weirdly have plus four in oh. it. And I just want to <laughs> see if I can sense anything that's kind of weird. I like that it. Isn't the overnight oats? Check out the big brain on Ron. Yes. Go ahead and roll Arcana okay. for me. Okay, that is a natural one. Mm. Unfortunately, you hate to see it. Cannot tell. I have plus six in athletics. Can I like? Can is there anything I can like lift that would let me know? What's yeah, going do on? that. 
Can I like the question <laughs> on every jock's mind? I've got it. Lift Ron up, and then I'll roll Arcana again because I'll be higher up. Higher point of view. Yeah. That's very stupid. So yeah, go ahead and do that. <laughs> All right. Oh, great. Perfect. Let me help you out. Because Ron is short. I'm like, let me help you out here. Yeah. And Daryl picks up even with a plus six. He gets a nine. So I feel like uh, Daryl tries to pick up Ron and then he goes, oh, and his back gives out. <laughs> and he just kneels down and goes, oh, shit. Sorry, Ron, get off me. Get off me. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'll give you all one more go. If one person <laughs> wants to give me a perception check. All right, I'll give you a perception check. Can I can I bardic inspiration you right now? Can I bardic inspiration you right now? You could bardo me. Like you just pull out your guitar and strum a chord? What do you do? No, I'd probably just kind of like whisper some lyrics. Like, what, what do you whisper? Having heard the Henry Oak album, um, he's going to whisper. You're thinking about Cartwright's pussy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's over there like, yab dab doom give my pussy a TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, go, I, I whisper to Henry. I go like, Henry, yab dab doom I, 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 all right. <laughs> I don't. That's disadvantage. It throws him off this game so hard. I don't. It's my dad, dude. What are you talking about? <laughs> what did he say? What did that one say? He. Don't worry about it. I. Uh, I got a um nineteen. <gasps> perception and then i'll what does bardic get me i can roll a d6 you can roll a d8 to add to it all right i'm gonna put some stank on it then i got an eight so that's like a something wow. like it's a 27 so the check was for a 20 so you 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 smash the check so you notice it's so small and it's so subtle it's no wonder that you didn't notice it before but there's a tiny 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 little dot above the left eyebrows of lark and sparrow what and you remember that when Canary was telling you about the homunculi, when she pointed out Payton, she said that was Barry's signature on all this homunculi. Payton has that same dot in that same spot, and Lark and Sparrow have one as well, but it's very small and very subtle, and you just now realized it. Uh, Dad? Yes, son? Wh where are my children? They're, they're right in front of you. They're, 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 they're holding very silly-looking gloves. No, those are... They've got your little dot on them. Oh. <sighs> My commitment to my brand, I knew it was going to be, I knew I was going to regret that one of those days. Uh, yes. Yes. Correct. Yes. Those are homunculi with, with <gasps> souls of your children inside of them. Yes. Daryl leans over to Glenn. He's like, Henry can't be mad because like, it wasn't even really his kids that we. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Technically, we are completely <laughs> absolved of any parenting crimes that we did. Yeah, now, we're this good. is actually a plus for us. Probably a negative yeah. for us as a whole. Wait a minute. <laughs> Did you do this to all the kids? No, no, I don't want your disgusting kids. No, 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 just the special. Oh, nice, <laughs> okay. <laughs> just these two beautiful <laughs> boys. Where are my children, Dad? I wonder, I wonder if you're right. I wonder if trying to tamp these emotions down is not the right move. If trying to hide this darkness inside of us, this chaos that's just bubbling beneath the surface, I wonder if that's, perhaps in some way that's dishonest. Perhaps you're correct. And he with horrifying speed, punches the air upward, just whoo, and the wooden surface of the floor that you're standing on, almost like a, or exactly like uh, an earthbender from Avatar, a pillar of wood, a, a big branch, like with a, with a, practically with a fist on the end of it, just a bald bunch of branches, a gnarled bunch of branches. One of them comes out and just hits Sparrow in the face so hard, he flies through the air and slams against the back wall of the room and he goes i think actually i'd like to see your fucking anger henry henry fucking turns into a bear and he says <laughs> okay then let's go oh shit it's on <laughs> Fun. it's on
Dungeons and Daddies is Matt Arnold as Daryl Wilson. Anthony Birch is our DM. Will Campos is Henry Oak. Beth May is Ron Stampler and myself. Freddie Wong is Glenn Close. Theme song and outro is All Right by Maxton Waller. We're supported by our patrons at patreon.com slash dungeons and dads. You should probably check that website out. But in the meantime, shout out to Dylan Irwin, Ty Enrico, Milo Meadsong is an uncle. I love you, Willa. That's a very long name. Millie Z, Christian Friend, Kay Burnett, Jim Poggle, Kyle Fisher, Jordan K. Thomas, Thomas Niebuhr, Kendall Hunt, Julian De Los Santos, Ezekiel Soir, Cody Kirker, Sarah Watson, Jasmine Phillips, Claire Rowe, Nicholas Johnson, Asad Khan, and Megan Fisk. Some things we want to tell you about. First of all, if you're in the United States, we're heading into an election. Have you registered to vote? Voting, as you know, is considered by many to be the ultimate pro-gamer move. So if you haven't registered yet, head on over to headcount.org slash the daddies to get yourself properly registered to vote. We have a registration goal, and if we hit that, we're going to do a bonus West Wing-style one-shot full of intense, long hallway walk-and-talk scenes. Head on over to headcount.org slash the daddies. Get over there, register. It only takes two minutes. Our store is up with DFTBA now, and our shipping rates aren't totally wild, so if you want merch, head on over to DFTBA.com, click on Creators, click on Dungeons and Daddies, check out what we have on offer. Follow us on Twitter at Dungeons and Dads, Reddit.com slash R slash Dungeons and Daddies, our website, DungeonsDaddies.com. Thank you so much for listening. Next episode's coming at you September 29th, so we will see you then. There was a time when you could read between the lines. You know they never brought you down. Never brought you down. Listen, I don't want to spread hate on anybody, but like if there's 17 minutes of things wrong with The Godfather Part 2, I'm just like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Part two is uh, Roman numbers, not the number. <laughs> it should be the doodly two, just the, the two. <laughs> Ding! <laughs> Whoa, Godfather 2 got fucking owned on YouTube today. <laughs>